Hello, I'm Marjorie. Um, this is my bariatric sleeve journey, and I wanted to give you an update on what's been going on. I was supposed to have my surgery on September 22nd, but because of COVID-19, you have to have a COVID testing before each procedure. So I had the endoscopy, and I had to take a COVID test for that, but little did I realize that I was supposed to go, and it's my own fault, it was on the paperwork, um, but there were so many tests that I had to take, I didn't realize that I had to take another COVID test to go for my surgery. So I got a call saying that, um, Marjorie, you didn't take your other COVID test, you can't go. And I said, yeah, I, I took it. So then she said, no, you have to take two. So, all right, we have to reschedule it. So, okay, fine. So now they rescheduled it for this coming Monday, which is um, October the 12th. Now, my son is getting married on the 10th, and so two days after that, I'll be going for my surgery. I am so excited. I, uh, it's a long time. I'm waiting now because it, it seems like it anyway, uh, from the start of the program in December. Um, and it was a six-month program, but uh, because of COVID-19, things got pushed back. So here it is, um, October now. And um, I'm finally going to go for my surgery. Um, I'm very excited about it. I can't wait to start um, my life over again. I feel like I'm 60, but I feel like I'm getting a second shot at life. Hoping that this operation will help my mobility. Um, it'll be less weight on my feet because my feet have, from my waist down, I have neuropathy. So I'm always struggling with pins and needles and um, it gets so numb and sometimes it feels like a noose like it, like you know you ever do the Indian sunburn on your arms like when you were a kid they would do that Indian sunburn and they'd run away but this is what it feels like on my I would say like the top of my leg like say the mid leg from like the top of my leg to my knee that's where it starts sometimes down to my ankle and it feels so tight and it's like who so tight and it's numb and it's hard to move and like you can't even feel your leg. It's just so horrendous. So I'm hoping that when I drop like over 100 pounds with the sleeve operation, it'll be easier and maybe it'll be less numbing. I I'm hoping, I'm praying and um, I won't have to take the metoprolol. I take metoprolol twice a day. I take it, oh wait, hold on a second here. Okay, I was getting a phone call. I had to stop it. Um, I take metoprolol twice a day. So I take 25 milligrams in the morning and then 25, uh, 50 milligrams at nighttime. And so when you take metoprolol, it gain, you can gain weight from that. So I thought, whew, so I'm, if I stop taking it, that won't, I won't gain weight because I'm not taking it. I will be off the medicines, which I'll be so happy. Um, I'm also a pre-diabetic which I never knew I was, but I am now. And um, two weeks before you go for this operation, you have to go on a liver shrinking diet. And that's like different doctors require different liver shrinking diets. Like some people I've heard, oh, it's only all liquid. That's all you can have. Um, this one, you can have like a shake three times a day, um, like some kind of protein snack. And then like, I think six ounces of meat and then um, some vegetables. And that's not so bad. It's really not because, you know, I get to have meat and vegetables too. So it's not like totally, you don't feel totally neglected or feel like, st like you're starving. Um, and you're used to it. But I started this, this is probably going on almost a month that I'm doing this because I was going to have the surgery in September 22nd. So I had to start uh, 14 days before that. So I was on it. And then I had to reschedule, so now here I'm still on it, and then on Monday when I go. So I've been on this diet a long time. Uh, and what I'm finding is that um, my body has been coming so itchy. And I don't know if this has ever happened to anyone else, but for me, um, I've been like so itchy. And, and I didn't even realize I was so itchy till one day I was in the shower, and my head started burning when I was washing my hair. And I thought, oh my goodness, what's going on? Why is my head burning? But I must be, I must have. Um, been scratching my head in the in the when I was sleeping and I must have like cut my head 
you know, so it started burning in different spots. And I was like, holy cow, why am I itching so much? So I started thinking about, you know, what I'm eating. And so I was doing the Slim Fast Advanced. So I thought, okay, well, it must be something in the Slim Fast Advanced that's doing this to me. Um, so then I switched to Atkins. Um, and actually, it has only 23 grams of protein. So I'm supposed to be taking 30, really. Um, so I have to have to like well once i have the surgery i won't be able to do that i'll have to go to premiere and that has 30 grams of protein that's what they want you to have so um for now this is what i'm doing but my point in telling you that is that my body has become like so like ultra sensitive to sugar and a friend of mine suggested that maybe it was my body detoxing because it's not used to having just like certain things maybe i don't even know so i was trying to drink some more water and um trying to drink more tea and green tea and hopefully like that'll help i i don't know but um i only have a few more days of this and i'm glad and then i could just go to whatever the new um norm will be after i have the surgery which i guess when you first do it, it's just liquids like the first two weeks and then um i think it's like pureed food and i'm not quite sure because i'm not at that point yet and i have to look at my book to become more familiar with it and um i was a little nervous that i when I had the surgery, like I would maybe pass out or, um, is my body going to like pass out or am I going to pass? Am I going to get weak? And I thought, you know, March, get real. <laughs> if you feel like a little woozy, sit down, like don't, don't go get dramatic about this or go near your bed. And because I don't really go anywhere, um, I don't have to like, if I feel that way, I'll be right near the couch. If I pass out, hello, I'll wake up, you know? So I'm not going to really worry about that. I'm going to be positive about this and, and think, you know, I've been following all the rules. I had to quit smoking. I did that. Um, I had to eat like every two to three hours during the program when I first started. You know, it was hard. It, it seems like you were constantly eating, like you were constantly nibbling all the time. But, you know, you, you get used to it. it. It's not it's not hard to do. You, you get used to the program. Uh, smoking was a little tricky, but... Um, I just figured that I was more important than the cigarette was and um, sometimes when you're so stressed out you just feel like grabbing it and smoking and and then that's the end of it and think about it later oh I'll, I'll quit later but um, that's your demise <laughs> if you start smoking again um, it just makes it harder for you that's all so I wouldn't recommend doing that and I had mentioned in my last video that I keep a cigarette um, in a pack I keep one cigarette in a pack with a lighter and if I would feel too stressed out or I felt like I needed a cigarette I would go in my drawer take that one cigarette out put it in my mouth take the lighter and almost light it but not really lighting it so like you're away from the cigarette like this and you just pretend and you go through all the motions and so you're simulating every motion whether you're ashing it Move, moving it to this hand if you're driving in the car you roll down the window or you press the button to roll down the window you make every move and then when you're all done after like five minutes you stick it back in the pocket um stick it back in the pack and you put it away whether you put it in your pocketbook or your drawer or whatever and and that really helps um what am i hoping to gain from this operation i'm hoping to gain mobility i'm hoping to gain a new wardrobe I'm going to gain more confidence um, lo to live longer. That's the biggest thing for my health. And I had mentioned I was a pre-diabetic, which I never knew, but stands to reason that I would be a pre-diabetic. Diabetes does run in my family, and um, but I never thought I would get it. And, you know, you never think you're going to get it, whether it's what it, whatever, whatever issue whatever disease, you never think you're going to get it. You never think, ah, oh, it's not going to happen to me. I'm invincible. That's how I felt anyway. I thought, you know what, I'm not going to have, this is not going to happen to me. And it's not like I was trying to avoid it. It was not, wasn't trying like I was watching my sugars or anything like that. I was just going about doing my own thing, just thinking, nah, it's not going to happen to me. And voila, it happened to me. And I was like, whew, or I never thought I'd have a stroke. Wow. And I had a stroke and then I had two strokes, two strokes. And, and paralyzed on one side and in the hospital for 87 days and a tumor in my back. I mean, I always had back problems. Um, whew, when I, well, from when I first got pregnant, um, 
1984, I had my first child, my oldest son, Dave, and um, I had back problems for a long time. So I just thought, you know, this is what I have to do. You know, this is this is my lot in life. And, you know, but being overweight, your back hurts more. I mean, you could be thin and have back problems, too. But um, for me, I it was probably added trauma to my body, you know. Um, so what else am I going to gain from this? Um, living longer, more time with my grandchildren. I have four grandchildren. Um, Madison, uh, my oldest granddaughter. Then I have Liam. He's five. Uh, Maddie's six, wait, seven? Don't quote me on this, six or seven. <laughs> I'm only the grandmother, hello. Um, yeah, Maddie's seven. And she's in first grade. And Liam is in kindergarten. He's five. And then there's Noah. He's five. And he's in kindergarten. And then there's Logan. Yeah. And um, he's three, almost three. And they're my pride and joy. They're my world, and I love them, and, and I try to do special things with them. And, and in fact, um, I do tea parties with them. And where I have a big um, theater-sized popcorn maker that was given to me from a good friend of me, a good friend of mine years ago. Um, so I have it in my kitchen, and when the grandkids come over, sometimes I'll make popcorn, and the house smells like popcorn, and the kids get all excited, and they're jumping around because the popcorn's jumping all, you know, hopping all over the place, and they... Um, they stand on the seat of my my bicycle, my stationary bicycle, so they can reach and they can see. And then they like to can they help mix it? And then we throw some mush, marshmallows in there too. And it, then they they just love it. And I put it into a little um, popcorn bag for them, like you know they have at the theater. I have a couple of them. And then um, when we have our tea parties, I get uh, I make popcorn and then I get this little tea set, and I have little. They're little glass teeth that it has roses on there, and they're so cute and delicate, and the kids are so cute. And I have a video, a video on that too, of us having it and how they raise their pinkies, and it's just so fun. And I just love my grandchildren, and I want to have another tea party. So I think um, my son's going to get married on this Saturday. Surgery's on Monday, so in a couple of weeks I'll have another tea party, and we'll break out the tea set, and we'll get some pastry. And I'll cut it up and I'll get these uh, Nutri-Grain bars and then I cut them up or blueberry bars. They're healthy bars and I cut them in little slivers and I put them on the plate and then we have decaf green tea. And um, we pour little tea in there and they take turns being the chef. The chef means the one that's in charge of putting it all together and, and they like doing that. And they're like, let me, they fight over it. Let me do that, grandma, please. And I'm like, I have to take turns and we're all about manners. And then we put on a British accent and um, we have a spot of tea and it's just a lot of fun. And I try to be a fun grandma. So that is what I'll be able to get more of too, having years around with my grandchildren. And that's important to me. And they love, uh, they love their grandmother and, and, grandmother loves them <laughs> and I've told you in my last video that I cry when I'm happy and I cry when I'm sad and and those were happy tears just then let's see what else do I plan on getting I plan on having more children um more time with my children and um I've been working on this YouTube video um this one and a video channel and putting more videos on there, different stories. Like I like to read books. Like for my when my kids were little, I'd read them books and I would um, make the noises of the animals, or I would make the the voices of the people, the different characters in there, and to make it fun for them. And that's what I want to do on this video channel that I have. I mean, this YouTube channel that I have now. So I'm working on different things, and I like to inspire people and to encourage them to believe themselves and. Um, to push forward in your life. And even though life may give you hard times, and let's face it, we all go through hard times, then um, sometimes life happens for you to help you and motivate you and to wake you up and to change direction. And, you know, I, I'm thankful that I lived. I mean, I should have died with when this when I had a ruptured brain, brain aneurysm, people don't live. They die. Then um, I was bleeding. It's it's the vein in here. It's, um, oh, well, let me see. Right here is where I have a dent in my head. They had to make a dent in my head. And I have a titanium coil, so it's the vessel ruptured. 
So um, when that happened, it created a stroke. Um, then I was in my bathroom. My friend found me in my bathroom. She called the ambulance, but I was wedged between my toilet bowl and my shower wall because it's a small space and evidently I passed out on the toilet bowl and I got squished in there and so then they had to have an emergency squad come and remove my toilet bowl so um, it was like intense and when in fact when I was at the hospital the doctors wanted to know if maybe I was beaten up because my stomach was all black and blue and that was from the the wedge to being squished in there but um when they op they operated on my head and I had a stroke then they operated on my stomach and I had wait they operated on my head and I guess I had already had a stroke and and then when they operated on my stomach it created a stroke and that's when it created um, it paralyzed me on my left side so that was very tricky at the hospital um, but then they gave me some therapy and they were checking me to see what I was able to still do and sometimes I would get annoyed and I'd be like like what do they think I'm a boob here they don't think I know how to count or put match the cards and I felt like indignant or can you fold these clothes and I'm like uh all right I'll fold these clothes but like I don't fold clothes at home like they're like well how do you fold your clothes at home I go I don't I throw my underwear in the drawer and I hang everything else up so they were like, all right, well, you can do it now. But um, that's what they needed to do to help me and to assess how I was. And, and I was coming along and all of that was for a purpose and all of that helped me. Um, let's see, what else am I going to look forward to? I look forward to um, see what else God has for me in this next part of my life. I mean, I'm, I'm so excited. I'm going to be lighter. I, and I don't anticipate getting heavier because I'm not going to have any more babies. Hello, I had four babies and I had one miscarriage. So it, actually like five babies. Um, and I won't have to gain weight with that. So I'm just really excited to this next part of my future. And, um, and see what God has for me. And I own my own home. And um, it's just, it's just me helping whoever God sends along my way my children my grandchildren my friends mingling maybe I'll meet somebody maybe I won't but maybe I'll got to open the doors for me to go sing somewhere um one of the things that I used to do was I was an entertainer and I would travel around to different places and I based out of Tamaqua so I would travel like a two-hour radius and we would go to retirement communities, private communities, um, hospitals, uh, veterans hospitals, regular hospitals, um, nursing homes, assisted living, locked units, just a lot of places. Where, wherever, wherever somebody asked us to go, we pretty much did it. And we did private parties too. And then we DJed too. We did reunions and and parties and weddings and just it was so fun but COVID shut us down and it hasn't reopened for us and I just think that that's a closed door right now and if God reopens that door that's fine because I'll tell you what I miss it I miss it I met a lot of a lot of wonderful people and I have great memories with that and and that's like a void in my life and that's why I decided to go on YouTube and um, start doing some kind of program as though I was at a facility <clears throat> introducing a song and I like to tell stories too so I would tell a story or a short couple sentences before a song little intro so that's what I figure I'm gonna start doing now but I think I've gone on too long with this program or I mean uh, this video enough but I want you to like if you like it uh, share it if you would and subscribe and I'd appreciate it. And I'll see you in the next video. Thank you. Oh, I'll, the next video will be after I have the surgery, which will be Tuesday. I'll probably do something from the hospital. A short video just to say that, hi, I'm here. Whew, pray for me. I'm going in and I'll see you when I come out. But thank you for listening and I'll talk to you soon. Bye-bye.